First one, heat transfer seven. Why do you set the convection and radiation heat gain equal to the heat transfer from conduction? So I kind of snipped the beginning of the video as a way to give some context before diving into the solution here. Okay. Um, I really just want to go over the setup for this problem. So referring to the diagram, imagine you have a pipe and this tan section is meant to represent the insulation and the gray is meant to represent the pipe itself and everything inward, which I'm glossing over a lot of the detail, but I think it might be beneficial to expand on some of that detail and just talk about some of the assumptions I'm making because there's a lot of different potential forms of heat transfer here. And there's only two, which I'm ultimately, well, three, I guess you could say that I'm ultimately considering and I'm dismissing all the others, but you should be comfortable with the rationale for why I'm doing that. And um, it's written up pretty well in the book if you wanna check the written solution and watching the first five minutes of the video again slowly and kind of pausing as I speak, I'm, I'm racing along with the assumptions, but you wanna make sure that every step of the way you're buying in to what I'm doing. Otherwise, um, you're just taking my word for it. And then when it comes time to solve it on your own, you're gonna be stuck. So what are the forms of heat transfer around this pipe? Well, it's ambient temperature outside and it's a chilled water pipe. So it's cold inside, hot outside. And that heat is trying to make its way in. And there's three modes of heat transfer, right? So which ones are applicable for that heat that's trying to get in? I would argue that there are two potentially. One is radiation from the ambient to, um, to the outer surface of the insulation. And the other is convection from that air, any of the air that's in direct contact. Uh, we're going to ignore conduction because air is a fluid. So the primary mode of heat transfer from the air to the insulation is convection. But we have, we have this mixture of radiation and convection. And those are happening in parallel. So maybe, that, maybe this pipe is in a room, and we could say that the walls of the room are the same temperature as the ambient air, they're both 73, uh, and we can analyze the, uh, the total amount adding the radiation and the convection together. So that's the first step, is just getting the heat from the environment into the insulation. The next step, potentially, is going through that insulation. So just because heat has arrived at this outer surface, it's now got to penetrate through the thickness of that insulation. And by the way, this is pretty similar to the way we would analyze uh, a composite wall where you have many layers. Only difference being that with a composite wall, those layers are just horizontal planes or vertical planes that are in parallel. And now we have a different geometry because it's concentric circles. But either way, the next step is to go through the next layer. And that's one thing and one thing only, that's conduction. Because that's going through a solid. So these two, I'll call that one, and these two will be two. Now let's talk about three, four, and five, even though they're not considered in the solution. Let's just say what they would be. Now we've arrived at the outside of the pipe, and we've got to get, well, actually, even before that, just at the interface of the insulation and the outside of the pipe, you can have a contact resistance, which is to say that just because two objects are in direct contact, doesn't mean heat transfers readily from one to another. So there can be some resistance just at that interface. I'm assuming here that because the insulation is wrapped around the pipe and there's no space in between, that uh, that contact resistance is negligible. So I'll write that down as thing three, no contact resistance. If there was, we would have to account for that. And how would we account for that? Well, we're looking for the total resistance across each of these layers. So as I'm listing out what these modes of heat transfer are, we'd be adding up those resistances, just like you would with a composite wall. We'd be saying like our total, what is going on with my pen? Sorry, guys. Our total equals R1 plus R2, et cetera, et cetera.
Okay, so the next thing after there's no contact resistance is getting through the thickness of the pipe itself, which would be another conduction. But now I'm making the assumption that it's a steel pipe, it's a great conductor, that resistance is negligible, and the pipe is not particularly thick. So the rate at which um, the, the level of obstruction or resistance that there is to heat transfer flowing through the thickness of the pipe is negligible. So four, no resistance. through pipe. This is going to drive me crazy. I'm going to have to type. Okay, and then after the thickness of the pipe, we're finally going to transfer heat into the water itself. And that is convection because we're going from a solid to a fluid. But now I'm making the assumption that that water flow is turbulent and that all of the heat readily finds its way into the water with very little resistance until everything is kind of um, reaching equilibrium at that level. So no resistance into the water stream. So if you're buying those assumptions for three, four, and five, then what we're saying is that this heat transfer in, normally we'd have to add up all of the resistances through all of those layers. Now we're saying that goes through really two layers, one and two. And since there's only two, Rather than add up the resistances, I'm just saying that the amount of heat transfer through one equals the amount of heat transfer through two. And that's the setup. And that's probably the hard, hardest part of this problem. So as you can see here in the first part of the solution, I'm taking those two together. Uh, we've been given an overall heat transfer coefficient. So this accounts for both conduction, I'm sorry, uh, convection and radiation is baked into this number. And then the conduction is uh, based on the geometry of the pipe. This area is the surface area, the outside of the pipe. So that's like the surface area of the cylinder. And um, the conduction, you have to use this special equation that has the natural log and the ratio of the radii in the denominator, which is in the reference handbook. And that's, that's uh, pretty well covered in the solution video. So kind of a unique case where you're able to just set the first the heat transfer through the first layer equal to the second layer and neglect everything else. That won't always be the case. Um, I've encountered problems where they give you information about the resistance of the pipe or they give you a contact resistance. And usually you can get away with just ignoring the numbers. And uh, basically what they're trying to get you to do is to waste time with that. But if you know how to deal with it, and you just account for it and you determine that it doesn't make much of a difference to the solution, it, it doesn't hurt to, uh, to include it. It's a good problem, definitely worth going through that one again slowly and making sure these assumptions make sense.